uh, thank Chris for the introduction. And uh, hello everyone, I'm Jiang Nan Li from the University of, of Manchester. It's my great honor to receive this award. And uh, firstly, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my supervisors, Professor Martin Schroeder and uh, Dr. Sahai Yang for their nomination. And I thank the MOF 2020 team for selecting me to receive the Early Career Award and the lecture invitation. So my research is on gas separation by MOF materials, including the removal of air pollutants and the energy gas purification. So here I'm going to talk one of my work, the capture of nitrogen dioxide by MOF material. So it's maybe a little spoiler of uh, Professor Martin Schroeder's talk, which we'll be giving tomorrow. But don't worry, I'm sure he has very more exciting stories for you. So let's start the why nitrogen dioxide. So when it comes to the nitrogen dioxide, the most impressive things comes to our mind is air pollution. I believe all of you are familiar with the air pollution and the, many of you may live in polluted air. So as a major pollutant, nitrogen dioxide has caused serious environmental and health problems like the formation of smog and the destruction of the ozone and the rise of the global warming, also the premature deaths. So the WHO reports that there are 92% of people live in polluted air and uh, every year over 7 million dies from the air pollution. The governments have to spend a huge cost on the health service every year. But where the O2 comes from? So the light, lightning, the decomposition of the organism as a natural source of the NO2. But from the government annual report, nowadays human activities, especially the utilization of transportation and the fuel combustion, account for the main emission of the NO2. So to improve the environment and to improve the human health, the re removal of the NO2 from exhaust gas is necessary. As you may know, nowadays actually the most material technology for denox is selective catalytic reduction with ammonia. So to some extent, this SCR can effectively convert NOx to nitrogen and water. But there are some problems. For example, the toxic gas ammonia and the high temperatures are necessary for this reaction, so which is not friendly to the energy and to the operation. Also, you may hear from the news, due to the high risk in catalytic water being stolen from cars, so the precious metal catalyst becomes the insurance nightmare of the car owners. Besides that, the O2 emotion, emission from the post-SCR is still much higher than the WHO release guideline and still quite harmful to the human health. So we, have, we need to develop new materials, technologies, and techniques to completely remove trace O2 from the exhaust gas. And uh, to effectively remove O2, the techniques should be able to selectively capture O2 from the exhaust gas. Also, due to the high corrosive and the reactive nature of O2, a long-term stability against O2 is required for the sustainable development of the materials. Besides that, ideally, the system should be able to convert the capture O2 into profitable chemicals. So these requirements 
actually fulfill an ideal O2 capture system requirement and it raises the challenges for the capture medium where the system reversibility and the material regeneration are required. But in principle, the capture of gases by phase absorption within porous material is a promising approach that can fulfill these requirements. But the reactive and oxidative nature of NO2 have a bit of many traditional porous material like the silica, carbon, zeolite, and even many organic porous material cannot survive in the atmosphere of O2. So till now, no fully reversible to absorption O2 was reported in these materials, which is very discouraging. But only if we never give up and uh, so um, I believe mo most of you are familiar with the mental organic frameworks. So as an emerging porous material, MOFs have been applied to various gas absorption and separation due to their poor tunability, high porosity, and a huge surface air. From 2010, the researchers have tried to capture O2 by MOF material but not much progress has been achieved still due to the highly reactive nature of O2. So actually, encouragingly, the first example of reversible MOF, of reversible O2 absorption in MOF, MF, MF300 aluminum, was reported in 2018. And this MOF displayed extremely high uptake at ambient conditions. And I believe this work encouraged us to develop more promising materials, and it paved the way for the development of future capture and the conversion technologies. But if you watch carefully in the absorption figure, you can see that actually the absorption, the O2 absorption at the low pressure is quite low. I know it's a little bit difficult to tell from the absorption figure, so I have to say the author is quite clever and good at the figure drawing. But considering the extremely low concentration of O2 in exhaust gas, actually the material hardly plays a big role under practical conditions. So to capture O2 from exhaust gas, we need to improve its uptake at a low pressure. And normally, the introduction of open metal site can effectively improve the gas uptake, especially under low pressure. But the strong interaction between O2 and the open metal site often destroys the integrity of frameworks. So although the introduction of open metal site is widely applied to various gases uptake, it does not work well for the NO2 capture. But tuning the pore chemistry and the geometry is another way to improve gas uptake and the mixture's selectivity. So based on this idea here, a foundation gas solution was introduced to make a new MOF, MF520. This framework displayed different coordination environment from 300 aluminum. And in MF520, the mental center sink was five coordinated, and the 3D framework is suspended through two modes of mental ligand linkages. The sink bends to the nitrogen donor along the axis, and the four bridging couple solids propagate the structure along the diagonal. The sorted MF520 displayed a narrow bow-tie-shaped pore, and the surface air is much, slow, much lower than that in M300 aluminum. 
But after I obtained this material, the first thing I noticed is its ultra stability. This moth can even survive in boiling water for months and is tolerant to natural acid, which makes it very promising for the O2 capture. So encouraged by the super stability, the isothermal O2 absorption was measured at different temperatures. And as you can see, actually, it shows extremely high uptake at very low pressure. And even at 10 millibar, the saturated uptake is nearly reached. This is also accompanied by fast absorption kinetics, typically within minutes, which is favorable for the dynamic absorption process. And also the strong absorption is evidenced by the small effect of temperature upon uptake. So although 300 aluminum shows higher uptake at one bar, when the pressure was decreased to 10 millibar, only 10% absor absorption capacity returned, while the MF520 still shows saturated uptake and when the pressure was further decreased to one millibar, closer to the realistic conditions, 300 aluminum almost does not work, whereas 30% absorption capacity is returned in MF520. So that's compared with the 300 aluminum, MF520 seems more promising for the practical applications. And after that, the O2 absorption and the desorption cycles in this material was studied. There is no loss of absorption capacity and the crystallinity was reported within 125 cycles. So the cycling experiment demonstrated the excellent long-term stability against O2 of this material which meets the first requirement of an ideal O2 capture system. But to effectively remove O2 from exhaust gas, we still need a high selectivity towards O2. So next, I compared the uptake of other gases containing in exhaust gas, and we found that this material shows preferential absorption of NO2, and it becomes particularly aware at a low pressure and a high temperature, where the uptake of all other gases are traced, while the NO2 is still very high. Also, the calculated LX selectivity suggests that for different gas mixtures, it is it displayed the promising removal capacity of O2. So to evaluate the separation capacity, dynamic breakthrough experiments were carried out, and the various gas mixtures containing 2,500 ppm O2 was flowed through a MF520 packed column. Nice separations were achieved under various conditions, including the dry and the white gas mixtures and the presence of competitive gas, CO2 and even SO2, which confirmed the greater separation capacity of MF520. And uh, as, the, as the end of the column, we found that the concentration of O2 was, was reduced was reduced to 100, less than 100 ppb, which is much lower than that in post-SCCR reaction. And the release fulfills the WHO guidelines. So the ultra stability and the preferential O2 absorption demonstrate that MF520 is a great O2 capture medium. But these are not enough to be an ideal O2 capture system. As I mentioned before, 
an effective conversion is required to turn trash to treasure and to avoid the secondary pollution. So here we write a capture and a conversion system. In this system, the exhaust gas comes through the material packed column and at the end of the column, the clean air is obtained. So after this material is saturated with O2, it was washed by water and the air, where the quantitative nitric acid is obtained. And after this material is regenerated by the, sorry, after this material is regenerated under heating and vacuum, it can go to the next cycle. And this cycle in our study was repeated for 10 times to evaluate the reusability of the material. So encouragingly, no loss of conversion percentage and the material crystallinity were found. So all of this study, after all of this study, I believe I can say we nearly come to an ideal own to capture system. And also the optimal absorption and the separation behavior encourage us to dig out the possible mechanism, which may be instructive to the development of more promising materials. So here, a series of characterization were carried out. And interestingly, from the in-situ XRD, we found that all the captured N2 were demerized to N2O4 in the pore, and the pore geometry is precisely suitable to one N2O4 molecule. Also, 24-fold host gas interactions, including the hydrogen bonds and the eight dipole interaction between the captured N2O4 and the framework were identified. So, that's different from the observed 1D NO2 and N2O4 chains in MF300 aluminum. The precise pore geometry and the weak interactions work like enzymology, which lead to the excellent absorption, reversibility, selectivity, and stability. So beyond that, the multifold host guest interaction were further demonstrated by the INS spectra. Here are six major changes resulting from the direct interaction between the absorbed N2O4 and the soft CH groups were observed, which is uh, consistent with what we observed in the crystallography study. Also, the silent EPR signal at 200 K further confirmed the dimerization of NO2 in the pore. Additionally, from the variable temperature EPR experiment, the monomer was observed during the release of NO2. And the thermodynamic analysis on EPR's EPR study revealed that the major driving force for the dimerization is anthropic. So till now, we know the pore geometry and the intermolecular interactions are key factors of the optimal O2 capture. So in this study, I would like to say MF720 satisfy an ideal O2 capture system requirement. And by tuning pore geometry and the chemistry, we can successfully get an optimal O2 capture medium. So I do hope this study can inspire you at some point and the MF20 can contribute itself to improve the environment issue. Also more promising material for DENOX can be developed. So finally, I would like to thank Sahai uh, and Martin for their great supervision and uh, thank my colleagues collaborators for their great help on this study. And I thank the National Labs, Oak Ridge and ARS for the access of the facilities. Also thank the University of Manchester, CSC and the EPSRC for their funding support.
Finally, I also would like to thank the MOF 2020 team for their great effort on the conference organization.